One between Michael and Mighty. This is going to be on Polypoid. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Michael as the pink Protoss. Upper left-hand corner, we have Mighty as the red Terran. Michael is apparently a Bulgarian player, so I'm told. Which leads me to believe he's not the same Michael who's the Zerg player out there. Lucky Noob. Special thanks to Lucky Noob in chat on this live cast. Checking that out for me. This is Polypoid. Whoever wins this is going to go on to face Agistel, who, again, is still my favorite to win this overall, just because he seems to have a wide repertoire of creative builds that he executes very, very well. Nice mannered GL. Good luck from Michael. Starting things off. It is so nice to cast a PVT. Haven't been able to do this. Pylon. Warping down so nothing cheesy right off the bat. And let's see how Michael builds this. I feel like this is the USA Michael. Oh, okay, this is the USA Michael. I take it back. So Lucky Noob in chat is verifying this is not the this is not Bulgarian Michael. This is this is potentially the same Michael. Number 19 on the ladder. Go figure. So actually, this might be off race Michael. In which case, he should be the strong favorite to win. Because if... He's playing Protoss, but when he plays Zerg, he's one of the better Zergs in the United States. Uh, and honestly, I don't know, top 50 player maybe? Otherwise? Outside of Korea, maybe top 100? He's good, is what I'm trying to get at. I'm very interested in, in this configuration for Mighty and how well it works against some of these, like a dedicated... I really want to see like a dedicated Proxy 2 gate versus this forward configuration. Michael, by the way, scouting counterclockwise is going to, or sorry, scouting clockwise is going to end up coming across Mighty's base in cross position. He's got that refinery up and is going ahead and putting three SCV on gas. His ammo thus far has been the one factory into expansion play. First cell it's being produced for Michael, so he's not off, and he actually has not yet built an assimilator, so I think this is going to be maybe one zealot for scouting and a little bit of pressure with a follow-up to Nexus from Michael. We'll see. Probe harassing that front door. Is there a second zealot being produced? No, just the, yeah, single zealot into Nexus. He's not going to, this will get scattered out. Michael is scouting clockwise. He's going to get that cross-positional spawn a, a scout as well. Supply Depot being placed. That SCV getting hit by that probe over the wall. That will be a front door seal. And the Marine with the spawning position should spawn on the exterior, usually in that bottom left-hand corner. you got to be careful with that sometimes, depending on map position. And there we see that, fa that factory plopping down in the corner. And again, now here's the thing. Mighty is capable of doing some of those early rushes, but he's pulled one SCV, or sorry, two SCVs back to Minerals, and I do think he's going to go for more of that baseline macro build. And the Zealot is just going to have to sit out here and blockade this ramp. This will be kind of a clever thing. So he's actually, I like this. He's like, all right, if you're going to blockade like this and go light on Marines to get an earlier command center down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a Zealot down and make it a little bit more annoying and maybe run him out so that when you're trying to get your command center down, I can block it or do a little bit of harass, something along those lines. Or at least so you can't build it on the low ground. Nexus is warping in right here. So Michael's still going to maintain that baseline economic lead. You usually want to be one base ahead. Mighty, I don't know if that, what happened with this SCV. SCV, I think, did he get a scout? Let's check. Did get a scout into that base, but pulled that SCV back otherwise, perhaps for later shenanigans or perhaps a later bit of a scout. Zealot's moving his way back to home base, and that probe is sitting outside that natural expansion, either to maybe interrupt that command center or at the very least provide a little bit of information down the line. First tank is out, and command center will be finished in, I don't know, another... I wish I actually could do this. One day I will have the caster powers where it'll be like, the line is that far? Th that means there's 20 seconds left on this command center being built. That's how good I am at it. No, one day, one day I'm sure I'll get there. Have that sort of... I'm sure the Korean casters are there. First Dragoon is being produced. This SCV is sneaking in and seeing that Nexus. Dragoons and Two Gate, and actually critically getting a good look at the probe line and getting and seeing that whirling cybernetic score. Absolutely no other tech to speak of. Wow. That was an interesting trick. Actually, without having the second... I wonder if that happened with the probe. Usually you don't have that sneaky going through that back line unless you have another friendly SCV along line, but getting a little bit... 
<laughs> Mineral walking through that line unintentional. Probe's not in position to disrupt this command center and actually uh, trying to get there and is getting splatted otherwise. Does know that there's a sieged tank up on that wall. Second tank on that lower line. Not a lot to pressure this in position for Michael. He is setting up to more or less play defensively against potential vulture harass at this stage. And he's somewhat in the dark. Let's see if he opts for an observatory first off this robotics facility to get a little bit more information on his opponent. Third tank is being built for Mighty in the engineering bay. I kind of like these Mighty Walls. Mighty Walls. Uh, I like the Mighty Walls in order that they're kind of a little bit different. Usually you don't see the engineering bay on front like this. Although I will say if this ends up getting harassed or that SCV gets killed or this is delayed otherwise. Whoop. Dragoon losing a little bit of shield before backing off, providing some threat otherwise. Three tanks on that back corner. Comsat station will be up momentarily. For Mighty, it looks like he's already got one up. And he's already got level 1 weapons upgrading. Mighty has been pretty solid on executing that level 2 weapons, level 1 armor build thus far. And again, I still have in scanning, getting an eyeful of the four gateways that are plopping down. Sees the robotics facility and sees the observatory as well. Which suggests that, Michael, usually when you go observatory first, you're looking at more of a kind of anti-vulture anti sort of stance. And I'm wondering if Mighty's going to skip any sort of vulture harass in the mid-game as a result. Plopping down the two additional factories, which are customary at this stage. He's just been... Usually he's gone... I think at Mighty we saw in the previous game where he went for the earlier second machine shop and produced a little bit more tanks to start. Which I actually kind of like out of this build. But, as I was saying, usually when you're going anti-vulture like this, you are you see an earlier third from the Protoss. Dragoon actually camping out towards that third, just in case Michael is going for an early third himself. And he is, in fact, plopping down... I love it when I'm able to say those things right before they happen. But, early third at the mineral only. Now, here's the trick. This is five tanks. Two additional machine shops are plopping down. Level and weapons is about halfway finished. It is possible we'll just see a tank vulture push off that level one weapons upgrade and right and this is where it's just really challenging for protoss players these days at large is yeah you you're kind of caught in between right because there's the earlier attacks that you got to repel and you got to have units on the ground to be able to cope with SCV exploratorily going out there and eating some dragoon fire but also you got to be in position and have something to deal with that later that later push and you got to hit either tech or timing as well and again i have yet like i'm not sure i've ever seen the level two weapon level two armor build when it's been executed properly repelled period a goliath two goliaths being produced interesting i wonder what provoked that maybe it's the observer he wanted to pick that observer off because he went lighter on marines to start scanning his own base i think that's where that scan landed ended up not seeing the observer though the observer in that corner does see that armory spinning and the starport, which is remaining idle. Science facility going down, which suggests we're looking at the level 2 weapons build instead of anything else. But I will say, so here's what, I'm, here's what I'd like to point out. If you look at the supplies, Michael is at 86 versus 77, but just purely against level 1 weapons with this amount of siege tanks and, like, I don't know, pull two SCVs with this, I don't know that Michael would be able to repel this attack with what he has on the ground right now defend his third or his natural expansion, or really anything. Plopping down a bunch of additional gateways. So that's three, four. So four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, counting. Eight gateways down. Level one weapon's about halfway finished. We don't see a push towards any higher tech, but we do see, or sorry, what do I have, what do I want to call this? Tier two tech? Tier two tech? But we do see 1.5 tech. That's what I graded. It. It's like tier two is like high Templar, dark Templar, tier three arbiters, technically. Because if you think about it, like, on a tree, it's, like, you got branch one, and then, like, the next branch, it splits off that, and then it's, like, the twigs. Although the twigs are, like, the big powerful things in this instance. That was a terrible metaphor. Templar archives plopping down to get that little, that tier two tech. But the, the zealot leg speed is now upgraded. We do have a shuttle in the air with some zealots to do some bombardment. And you can see that level two weapons, level one armor already spinning. And again, Mighty has been really good at executing this build. He's got five factories already down and has two additional factories planting down and again he's been a little bit he, he didn't go for that early second machine shot but because he was just producing nothing but tanks he does have a pretty sizable tank fleet already 
and I expect him to plop down another machine shop somewhere in the near future within his SimCity. Mighty starting to move forward in position. This is the one thing, the one time I have seen this crushed is when I've seen a High Templar on the front door right around that timing and just plugging the gap and just coding that natural expansion with Sidestorm. I don't think that Michael's going to be in position to do that here. He doesn't have Sidestorm upgraded. He's not going to have High Templar right there in time. Machine Shop Whirling getting Spider Mines upgraded. Very late Spider Mine upgrade, comparatively. And he's moving out with these Siege Tanks a little bit early. Michael backed off position here with these Dragoons. Is going to catch one Siege Tank, actually two Siege Tanks, as Mighty being a little bit sloppy in execution here. And now, yeah, realizing he needs to get back to home base. It looks like Michael might have actually finally been the first Protoss to hit this, I think. So 11 minutes rolling around. I think it's about 11.30 or 12 minutes if you hit it. I think it's 11.30 if you hit it perfectly is when level 2 weapons. But Mighty is kind of doing like a ha ha ha. Yeah, I'm going for my third and kind of playing it more passively that way. But in reality, I think he is going for that full-on push. We'll see. It's possibly not, because he's only sitting at that one machine shop. But this is this is a lot of Vulture production that can support this. We'll see. It's hard to tell from my, from my perspective. He also has that Ghost out in the field. Arbiters are being two more gateways. Stargate and Arbiter Tech is somewhere out there, because we see Stasis being upgraded. Michael has complete eyes on this. Complete eyes, because that Observer is just sitting overhead. And he, I think he knows that this push is coming, because there's no SCV here building this command center and usually if a Terran isn't why well, take it back ha <laughs> just as I say that command center is being built rather passively so this should be a trigger for Michael to go ahead and build an additional expansion if he sees that and it looks like he's already got a probe in position setting up to take that vulture speed is being upgraded so what Mighty's going to need to do here oh scanning sorry never mind science also coming up going ahead and, and killing that Michael maybe did not see that command center being built. Because I think he's... Yeah, you can see he's not yet taking an expansion. And you can see the quandary in his his body. He's like, okay, that was a big army. I do know that they're level 2 weapon, level 1 armor upgraded. He's got level 1 weapons. Level 2 weapons is going to come with level 1 armor momentarily. He's getting his High Templar out. But you can see he just doesn't feel... He's being a little bit tentative. And just now putting down that Nexus. Dragoon's being pushed back against these Vultures. And the thought I wasn't able to complete is if he's not going for a full-on just crush attack here, he does need to rely on vultures and things like that to sneak out from that corner. He is getting pushed back. A nice lockdown on that shuttle to keep those Dragoon Bombs. But a lot of Zealots getting on top of that Siege Shank. A little bit of splash. The rest of Zealots getting on that front line. Nice defensive Matrix. The vultures have been cleared out, but another wave of Zealots moving in. And Michael's macro has been fantastic. You can look, he's still sitting at 133 supply as he's wiping this army out, which is going to put him in an incredibly strong position here in the mid-game. Mighty trying to have his cake and eat it too, and he didn't even expend any side storms if he can keep these High Templar alive against these Vultures. It looks like he is going to be able to do so. Crushed that... Crushed that fight. But Mighty, building that command center... If you are, if you're not going for the full-on attack and dedicating re uh, resources to it, then you need to have your army in position defending that. Archon morphing in because it feels a bit exposed out in the field, and Michael, being the first player I've seen thus far, able to counteract that early game time. Although it wasn't a full dedication for Mighty comparatively, that science vessel might be low on life. This observer sees this very exposed command center. Which is provoking Michael to push forward. He is a huge supply lead right now, using Zealots to clear those forward mines. And if he can get... Here's the quandary for him. He doesn't want to let those Vultures sneak out and be able to attack these exposed expansions. He does have a pylon wall here, but only a cannon to support otherwise. Sweeping around from that right. But he does have an opportunity where this is a very thin defense force. Zealots getting on top of that siege tank. Arbiter covering, but there was... Additional commsats. Archon is there. And more zealots sweeping in from underneath across a lot of mines that were planted. A little little bit zealot heavy. And that, again, yeah, it's going to force Mighty. He doesn't have the resources to defend this. 
lifting up, and that's going to hurt him dramatically. This is a pivotal moment in the game. Oh, look at that mind drag! Huge mind drag! And the Arbiter is still doing work on that command center. So Mighty needs to muster a force to go ahead and retake his third. In the meantime, Michael is sitting at five bases and is pushing to go ahead and take this upper right-hand base, which is going to put him at six. He's got decent saturation at the six o'clock, excellent saturation there. His main is looking a little bit thin. The three o'clock is well saturated. So he is, in fact, these bases are operational. And if he stays on top of his, his macro, which it looks like he is going to, he's going to push this into a victory in game one. Again, that command center being denied. Very impressed by Michael's play thus far. Which also leads me to believe, okay, maybe this is the Zerg Michael that we've seen that's opting to kind of swap things up a little bit. Tank's trying to siege on that low ground. These are forces that Michael can afford to lose at this stage. Another defensive matrix trying to provide a little bit of buffer for the back siege tank line. A second defensive matrix on that secondary line of tanks. Those Dragoons going to go ahead and back up. A lot of them getting wiped out. But here's the thing. Mighty, yeah, he might be able to reestablish the third base. But his main is almost mined out. His natural expansion is looking somewhat thin. This is going to be one mining base. And you can just look at the bank comparisons. He's struggling to keep uh, 600 supply, a little bit of Dragoon loss right there. Vulture sneaking around, seeing what it can take. It might be able to catch this probe. Let's see if Mighty's on top of it. Should be able to swing around and take out that probe. Another Vulture sneaking through. This is what I was expecting Mighty to do more than that full dedicated push. Is send out, you know, Vultures across the map. I think he realizes the situation he's in. Honestly, this might provoke an early GG. Or at least some sort of... Basically, Mighty needs to do something to sneak in this game. That Vulture finally reacting, but not before that cannon is already up. Should be able to clean that Vulture out, out before taking a little bit of base damage, though. But yeah, this is what I expected to happen earlier in the game. Is the Siege tanks to sit back, maybe a Vulture or two, maybe some mines in the fort position, and just these big forays of Vultures to go ahead and clean up expansions. I don't think this is going to... This is... Okay, yeah, Mighty can go ahead and halt this, but here's the thing, that Nexus can be cancelled, which will save resources. And also, he's moving himself into the main, which, if the Dragoons get in position, it looks like the Zealot's moving forward to go ahead and clear out some of those mines with those observers as well. He might force a Nexus cancellation, maybe. Is he going to cancel it? Michael's not even going to cancel it. He's just going to let it sit. But now these Vultures are pinned in, and that means they're not going to be able to do a lot of things in other locations. They're pinned in. Oh, it looks like they might actually get some pro kills, though, as a result. Good comsat. But still, that was like two and a half? Two and a half control groups of vultures getting killed for a handful of pro kills. And that's not even... I mean, that's... That's a great trade for Michael, is I guess what I'm trying to get at. He's happy to lose three or four probes for three control groups of vultures that did very little else. And now Michael pushing forward, getting good map control position. Does that ghost still have lockdown? A stasis on top of the two science vessels. Another Arbiter swinging in. That ghost is now out of the fight. <laughs> Dead. Siege tanks. A lot of siege tanks pushing this through. I don't think Michael has the raw... Wow, that stasis though. And on the back line, pinning a lot of these units in. Zealots on top of the siege tanks, melting through. They are heavily upgraded. The rest of the is going to back off, but... Still a very good engagement. I think Michael got the better part of that. He's at level 3 weapons, level 2 armor. So he's actually matching the upgrades for Mighty. And Mighty actually pulling an SCV off gas to build a turret in the forward position to maybe catch this Arbiter before lockdown wears off. And otherwise provide a little bit of a buffer defense. Flooding all of his SCVs to this mineral only. He's... Really, he wants critically an additional gas. It looks like that Arbiter... Well, let's see if Michael reacts. Okay, EMP... Empties that Arbiter's ability to stasis, which is going to make it not worthless, but less useful. Following things up. Michael approaching 172 supply. Just needs to really gather his army to engage Mighty. Mighty starting to push out. I think he realizes it's do or die now or never. He's trying to float another command center out to the 12 o'clock location. I don't think he's going for the long... I think what he's trying to do is he's like, okay, you know what? I know I'm in a bad position here. 
So let me just play a long-term macro game. Ooh, Mighty losing that shuttle. Or sorry, Michael losing that shuttle. Not that big a loss. Only two Zealots, though. It's, he can afford to lose. Main, mind out. Natural, mind out. Yeah, okay, so he actually floated his natural expansion there. Pulling the SEVs off the line to that 12 o'clock to resaturate, but fortunately doing that just as these Dragoons are pushing in from the south. That's three Arbiters and a recall into the main. And there's GG from Mighty. Didn't even realize there was a fourth Arbiter in position in the upper left-hand corner. Well played by Michael. That is the... And that's the thing. I don't feel like Mighty misplayed the the build. And that's the first time I've seen any Protoss. First of all, I've, that's the first time I've seen any Protoss in recent memory fight that off. But second of all, it wasn't just that he fought it off. It's he fought it off well. That was convincing. So we'll see if Mighty adjusts things or tries more of the same in game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.